This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hey guys, this is Cameron Harris again, back with another episode of SketchUp a 3D Toolbox. This is episode number six, and today we're going to be talking about the push-pull tool. Now, the name is a little bit confusing, but basically what it does is it extrudes two-dimensional objects, which is what we've been working with up until now, into three-dimensional objects. This is very powerful, and this is the way you really start to model things in three dimensions in SketchUp. So let's dive right into it. All right, so as usual, I've got my push-pull tool project up here. And now we're starting with an empty project as usual. And so we're just gonna start at the axis and we're gonna use the rectangle tool that we learned about in the last episode. And we're just gonna draw a cube. Let's make it, um, I'm sorry, not a cube, a rectangle. Let's make it maybe a six feet. I'm using the dimensions box. Six feet by four feet, enter. So there's my box. Nice little rectangle to start with. Now, you'll notice that in SketchUp, with the rectangle tool, you're building things in two dimensions. So right now it's just flat. We're viewing things in 3D, but you notice if we go down until we're level with it, it has no depth, none at all. It's just a flat object, just a plane. Now, this is where it gets interesting. This is where we go 3D. The push-pull tool is where everything kind of starts to take shape. Now the push-pull tool is uh, this tool right up here in the menu bar. I'm sorry, the toolbar. And uh, you can see it says push slash pull. It's got a box with an arrow pointing out of it. It's also this one right here in the tool palette. You can just select it to, uh, to activate that tool. And its shortcut is also the letter P. So if you're in like selection tool and you say P for push pull, switches right over to it. And this is also a nice little tip. If you hover over a tool in the toolbar, it'll actually say, uh, I'm sorry, not in the toolbar, the tool palette, it'll actually say in brackets next to it, P. That's its shortcut. So here we are. We have the push pull tool selected. And you can see that as we hover over this face, it selects. So that means that the push-pull tool is going to be working on this face if we were to click on it, which we do want to click on it. So we click once. And you can see now we've got a hold of it and we're like pulling it. We're pulling it right up into three dimensions. So we're actually giving it height now. We're giving it depth. We're giving it basically three dimensions. And you can see just like in, with the rectangle tool where we had our uh, dimensions uh, box, you can see right down at the bottom there, it says distance. And that's how tall we're pushing and pulling this. So you can see right now it's about one foot 10 and seven eighths of an inch. Well, that's not really what we're going for. I mean, we, so we could you know just keep going up and up and up until we finally got something we liked. But just like with the rectangle tool, we can just type in a value. So let's say we want this to be uh, three feet tall. I can just type in three apostrophe for three feet, enter, and there it goes. It's extruded into the 3D, and we now have a very nice little box. And this could be a room, this could be pretty much anything. Now, the push pull tool doesn't only work with flat objects, because I mean, really, this is just a bunch of flat planes or faces arranged with lines into a 3D thing. So we can still push and pull these things. And not just up, like I could grab this thing here and drag it up, say I wanted to add another two feet or so, click again, and there it goes. I can also grab these sides. So let's say I want this room, it's a little bit skinny, let's say I want it to be a little bit wider. I can just grab onto this side and just click and pull just like this. Now this is another very useful tip with the push-pull tool. Let's say I make this building taller. I click and drag it up. Let's say I make it taller by one foot. So type in one apostrophe, enter. 
Well, let's say I think, you know what? I want to kind of make that scale. So I want it to be one foot taller, but I want it to be one foot wider as well. Well, I could grab this thing here and type in one foot again. But I can also double tap. If I double click, it extrudes it out another foot. So let's say I push pull this guy out maybe nine inches or so. And then I double click the top face. It extrudes it out nine inches. So whatever my last value was, just double tapping any surface applies the same thing to it. Now there is one last thing to talk about with the push-pull tool, and that's pretty powerful. You'll notice that if I were to grab this face here and pull it up, it stays as one, one box. It's still just one seamless uh, thing made of six faces and a bunch of lines. However, let's say I wanted to make this have another box stacked on top of it. What I can do to do that is tap the Option key. And when I'm in the Push-Pull tool, if I tap the Option key, you notice the Push-Pull tool, the icon changes. It now has a little plus next to it. So to use that, same thing. I just click and drag on something, but you'll notice now it's its own separate entity. It's got that little border of lines around it so that these are all individual faces now. So I could grab this guy and pull him out separate from that guy. Same thing with this guy if I wanted to make some kind of a modern sculpture or something. And uh, that's how you start extruding things into 3D. And it's really very powerful. It does take some getting used to. Kind of got to wrap your mind around it. But it's really very powerful once you uh, figure it out. So by now you're probably realizing how powerful the push-pull tool really is. And it's very, very powerful, and it is really the basis of what makes up three dimensions in SketchUp. And we may have just been working with cubes this time, but coming up in future episodes we're going to talk about how to draw your own custom shapes, as well as how to draw things like circles and triangles and spheres. In the meantime, you can visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. There you can check out our show notes, download lesson files, as well as be involved with our forums. And if you have any questions or comments for us, send us an email. We are at harwoodpodcast at comcast.net. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.